Organisms in the environment don't live in isolation. They are constantly in contact with other species. In many cases, they will form associations with other organisms, and this topic will be the subject for a series of modules. In this module, we will look at the positive interactions microbes have with other species. Here are the learning objectives. Here's even more learning objectives. One of the groups we want to talk about is the methanogens. They are archaea, and there are many diverse species. If you look at a phylogenetic tree of the archaea, you see that they fall into the your, your archaeota. You can see the methanogens here, and you can see the methanogens here. They are obligate anaerobes, and they produce methane as a byproduct of their metabolism. Methanogens are found all over the world and in all sorts of habitats. You can find them in an anoxygenic sediments, You'll find them in animal digestive tracts. You'll find them in geothermal sources like hydrothermal vents. You'll find them in sewage sludge digesters, artificial biodegradation facilities, and they are endosymbionts of a number of anaerobic protozoa. So you find them all over the place. Where on the human body might you find methanogens besides in the large intestines? The answer is in your oral cavity, in the mouth. Surprised? I found that surprising, but it actually turns out there are anaerobic environments in your mouth. So what methanogens do is called methanogenesis, and this is a type of anaerobic respiration. Hydrogen is the most common electron donor for them, and the electron acceptor will be either carbon dioxide, formate, sometimes alcohols, methylamines, methanol, or acetate they are all reduced to methane. There is a unique set of C1 carriers and electron carriers, such as F420, that are present in these methanogens. The pictures here on the right show methanogens under a fluorescent microscope, and F420 will absorb the fluorescent light and then fluoresce green. And it's a nice diagnostic test to see if an organism is actually a methanogen. And there's two types of methanogens shown here. Electron transfer then generates a proton motive force, or interestingly, a sodium motive force. And then that's used to make ATP via ATP synthase. So what electron donors cannot pair with carbon dioxide is a term electron acceptor. If you look at the electron tower here, you'll see that iron is way below carbon dioxide, right? Where carbon dioxide would be reduced to methane, so there's no way you can use it. Hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide might be able to be used. I'm a little dubious that you're going to be able to find an organism that will use H2S as an electron donor since it's so close. It just does not give you enough energy here. There is an electron potential drop, but it might not be large enough. The biochemistry of methanogens has been worked out in detail. In this case, it is showing the reduction of carbon dioxide with hydrogen gas, this figure is. Carbon dioxide is reduced and put onto methanoferrin, the first unique C1 carrier. This is then, after reduction to formal, is then transferred to methanopaterin which then undergoes two reductions, resulting in a methyl group attached to methanopaterin. The methyl group is transferred to coenzyme M, and a final reduction takes place where a reduced coenzyme B reduces the methyl group to methane and combines the CoB with CoM. The regeneration of separate CoM and CoB by reduction with hydrogen gas is where the proton motive force is generated, as shown on the next slide. The formation of the CoB-CoM complex is reduced by the enzyme heterodisulfide reductase. The electrons for this process come from hydrogen gas and pass through F420 hydrogenase and methanophenazine, the latter being a unique hydrophobic electron carrier present in the membrane. Methanophenazine then reduces heterodisulfide reductase, but heterodisulfide reductase will only accept electrons and not protons. We have seen this game before, and the protons on methanophenazine are released and pass the outside of the membrane, thus pumping protons across the membrane and creating a proton motive force. The electrons on heterodisulfide reductase then reduce the CoB-CoM complex 
And of course, ATP is then made by ATP synthase, dissipating the proton motor force. That's the biochemistry of methanogens, and I just wanted to fill in that information. The other group of organisms that I wanted to talk about before we start talking about relationships is the acetogens. Acetogens are anaerobic bacteria and most are firmicutes. Now these are bacteria, not archaea. They use carbon dioxide as an electron acceptor and they reduce it to acetate and they produce an estimated 10 trillion kilograms of acetate per year. So they make a lot of organic carbon. Multiple donors are possible, but hydrogen is probably the most common that we've seen. The pathway is called the acetyl-CoA pathway. Pictured here is the acetyl-reductive pathway we discussed in the previous lecture on the carbon cycle. They link the creation of acetyl-CoA to the formation of a sodium motive force. And again, the sodium motive force can then be dissipated and generate ATP. In addition, this pathway at its end will transfer the chemical energy in acetyl-CoA to ATP via substrate level phosphorylation and produce acetate as an end product. So this pathway actually generates energy both by a sodium motive force and by substrate level phosphorylation. Before we move on and talk about microbial metabolic partnerships, I want to talk a little bit about methanogens versus acetogens. They're both competing for the same thing. Methanogens and acetogens compete for carbon dioxide and H2, hydrogen gas. Methanogens win when carbon dioxide is low or when cobalt is low. Cobalt is actually required and is part of B12, and B12 is a cofactor in acetogenesis. Acetogens can be, are present in higher nutrient solutions where you'll find both methanogens and acetogens. The reason methanogens normally win when hydrogen gas is low or CO2 is low is because their process is more energetically favorable versus that of acetogenesis. All right, let's spend a little bit of time talking about microbial metabolic partnerships. Microorganisms in the environment will often partner with other microbes and work together to degrade things in the environment. Some examples are shown here. Desulfo vibrio vulgaris will take lactate, ethanol, fatty acids, alkanes, and aromatics, convert them into acetate formate, hydrogen, and CO2. Methanococcus maripollutus will then take this and convert these compounds into methane. So remove those products so that the desulfo vibrio can continue. A methanotroph may take a methane and then transfer the electrons from there to a sulfur reducer, and then that then reduces sulfate to hydrogen sulfide. So there's lots of different examples of this going on. What I want you to get out of this is that there are many times microbial partnerships in the environment. This producer-consumer relationship may be mandatory for the producer, and then it is called a syntrophy. A syntrophy is a metabolic process in which two different organisms cooperate to degrade a substrate. Often the producer organism can't degrade the substrate without the participation of the consumer organism. So here's a good example. Syntrophomonas oxidizes butyrate to acetate to make ATP. Butyrate is electron donor. Protons are the electron acceptor generating hydrogen as a product. Right? So here's the pathway. Butyrate goes to acetate and to acetylphosphate, right, and ATP, and in the process, you produce obligatory hydrogen gas. The delta G naught of this reaction is a positive 48.2 kilojoules. It is unfavorable unless the hydrogen is removed. What happens is a methanogen partners up with it. A, the butyrate comes in, the syntroph converts it to acetate, the hydrogen gas is transferred to the methanogen, who takes the CO2 and makes as methane. And there's actually an interspecies transfer of this hydrogen. You can see here on this figure, and this is a fish figure, like a, a fish probe of this environment. And you can see here, the methanogens are coating the outside of this biofilm. And on the inside, 
you see the central, so they're in very close proximity. Microbial communities are common for aerobic and anaerobic degradation. In aerobic degradation, aerobic respiration predominates. Oxidized products such as carbon dioxide, nitrate, salt, and sulfate are produced. Oxygen is quickly consumed. Under anaerobic degradation, nitrate and sulfate respiration happens where possible, and then there's lots of fermentation. And fer fermenters produce partially oxidized products. These can then be used by acetogens, methanogens, and centrals. And this is this community physiology we talked about before. Right? You get degradation and depolymerization. If there's a lack of sulfate, these things get pushed to methane and water. If there happens to be a lot of sulfate around, then the sulfate reducers win, and this gets pushed to hydrogen sulfide, water, and CO2. Okay, some clicker questions. If something happened in the butyrate community such that the methanogen only removed half the hydrogen, the rate of butyrate degradation would? Which type of hydrogen utilizer do you think is present in the human colon? Okay, the answer to the first question is that the rate would decrease because if you're taking less of the hydrogen away, it's going to slow down the butyrate degradation. In the second question, almost everyone has been shown to have methanogens. Also, it turns out almost everyone's been shown to have acetogens. So the correct answer is D, both B and C.